23 Land Rovers come home, only definitely not to roost. They belong to members of the Land Rovers Owners Club and they've gathered on the Rover Company's 300-acre proving ground at Solihull, near the factory where all of them were made. Learning how to drive off-road is a long-standing tradition at Land Rover. Commonest mistake is to tackle the tricky bits too fast with too high revs. A Land Rover, like any other mount, mechanical or horse flesh, gives of its best when each obstacle is approached intelligently and not in a mad rush. For example, taking... That advice to owners of the original Land Rover still holds true 50 years later. For owners of the newest generation Land Rover, Discovery Series 2. There can be no doubt that Series 2 is a genuine Land Rover. During development, it was proven in the ultimate test drive, a trek around the world. The terrain and conditions required expert driving skills and put a durable, extremely capable four-wheel drive system to good work. The purpose of four-wheel drive is to provide optimum use of the vehicle's available power, not only on pavement, but more importantly, where the pavement ends. Series 2 is designed for off-road driving using advanced four-wheel drive technology. To get the most out of your Land Rover, it's important to understand the principles of off-roading. Learn the vehicle's capabilities. Recognize types of terrain and understand appropriate driving techniques. Off-road driving rarely requires speed. Always drive as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Assess ground clearance, approach, and departure angles, side tilts, and loose traction conditions. Understand how electronic traction control, hill descent control, and all-terrain ABS work. In addition, techniques such as proper gear selection are very important. With this basic familiarization of your Land Rover, many exciting off-road trips lie ahead. A good place to begin is with the owner's manual. Read the chapters which explain the principles of off-roading and the operation of the vehicle. Before starting out, pack some basic gear, including maps, food, water, and a first aid kit. Always wear seat belts. They are a vital component of the Supplemental Restraint System, or SRS. Even in day-to-day -day driving, it's important to remember the size and shape of the vehicle. Successful off-roading, however, depends upon a heightened awareness of its dimensions. Examine the undercarriage and become familiar with the locations of some key components, such as axle differentials, exhaust system, and steering linkages. You will need to know where to place the vehicle when driving over uneven terrain in order to protect them. Inspect front and rear overhangs. Get a feeling for available clearance so that when approaching an obstacle, you'll have an image of the critical part of the vehicle. When driving off-road, adjust the side mirrors down to show the rear tires. This helps to alleviate blind spots so that the sidewalls of the tires can be seen when passing close to rocks and stumps. This also allows better view of the sides of the vehicle when negotiating tight spots on the trail. You may also want to readjust the seat a bit more forward than your normal driving position for more comfortable use of the controls and pedals. Responsible off-roading should follow sensible and safe guidelines. Whenever possible, make the trip with another vehicle. If not, leave word where you plan to go and when you plan to return. Land Rovers are known for their off-road capabilities. The four-wheel drive system is permanent this means that four-wheel traction is always available without driver input. 
two controls operate the system. A transmission lever to shift the four-speed automatic transmission, and a second lever which operates the two-speed transfer case for shifting between high and low range, providing eight forward and two reverse gears. There are specific transmission combinations that work best for a variety of off-road conditions. Low range should be engaged when the terrain gets rough and requires slow speed control and additional power, such as to climb a steep hill. To shift to low range, slow down to under five miles per hour or stop. Shift the automatic transmission lever to neutral. Move the transfer case lever forward through neutral, continuing to low. When low range has not fully engaged, a tone will sound. If this happens, just repeat the procedure. Then shift the transmission to the appropriate gear. When shifting back to high range, use the same procedure and move the transfer case lever from low to high. Remember, slow down to below five miles per hour or stop. Shift to neutral. Transfer case lever toward you to neutral, then to high. For everyday driving on paved and well-graded gravel surfaces, use high range. Low range is used for driving in rough terrain. It provides engine braking, less wear and tear on the vehicle, and better overall control through use of a lower gear set. It is similar to the gears on a mountain bike, which combine to provide maximum performance in a wide variety of conditions. For high speeds on smooth terrain, a biker uses higher gear combinations as high range would be used for everyday driving. When in very rough terrain, requiring slow speed for precise control, a biker shifts down to low gear. Less effort is required, but speed is limited. Think of low range on Series 2 as those low gears on the bike. It is designed for use in low speed conditions where additional control is needed. And for both biker and driver, knowing which gear combination to use is one of the keys to success. In off-road conditions requiring low range, use third gear. With third gear selected, the transmission will shift to first or second or third when necessary for climbing and additional slow speed power. But for descents, defined as any time the front end dips, First gear should be manually selected by the driver before beginning the descent. This allows the transmission to engage first gear before the vehicle picks up speed down the hill. If the grade becomes more gradual and progress too slow, apply some throttle to increase the speed. If first gear is still too slow, shift to second gear. If it gets steep again and you feel a need to use the foot brake, shift back to first. Normally, engine braking will keep the speed down. Just remember, begin all descents in first gear. To provide additional control on a descent, Series 2 has HDC, Hill Descent Control, which should be engaged for all descents. Before starting down, push the HDC button. The HDC symbol will illuminate in the instrument cluster. HDC is active only in low range, in all forward and reverse gears. Hill descent control automatically applies brakes as required to achieve a consistent target speed on a descent. HDC reacts quicker than the driver, providing maximum available braking. The real benefit is prevention of wheel lockup by the four-wheel, four-channel, all-terrain anti-lock braking system. Remember to disengage hill descent control when the descent is finished. If the vehicle loses traction and can't complete a climb, apply the brake, shift to reverse, and make sure the wheels are straight. Then take your foot off the brake and back down. HDC will provide added control for the descent. Now try another approach. Remember, as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. A little more momentum may be the solution. 
In very slippery conditions, such as mud or snow, selecting manual mode may provide added control by holding the selected gear. Proper use of the transmission is the first step to success. Remember, control is key. Low range should be engaged for uneven terrain requiring low speeds. Use third gear. Select first gear for all descents. Once the descent is finished and braking no longer required, shift back to third. Use hill descent control for additional control. In addition to assisting in engine braking, HDC works with ABS to prevent wheel lockup. In very rough terrain, first gear engine braking and HDC may not provide enough control. Use the foot brake when crossing severe obstacles. Treat each one as a small hill, braking to ease off the drop. Here's a technique many off-road experts use for additional control. It's called left foot braking. This technique dedicates one foot to the accelerator, the other to the brake. By working the two pedals together, the driver is able to operate the vehicle very smoothly and help to prevent bouncing. This helps keep all four wheels in contact with the ground, providing better traction. Left foot braking is helpful in difficult off-road situations such as crossing a log or a ditch. Approach slowly on a diagonal to allow one wheel to pass over at a time. Use the accelerator and brake for precise control. Ease each wheel down gently to preserve clearance and prevent bouncing. The same principle applies for crossing a ditch. Approach it diagonal. Use left foot braking for precise control. Left foot braking is helpful in many situations, adding an extra element of control. Use the brake to ease off gently. The goal is to negotiate any obstacle slowly enough to keep the chassis from bouncing down. This preserves clearance. Remember to work the rear wheels down very slowly as well and make sure the entire vehicle is clear of the obstacle before proceeding. For these situations, slow speed to maintain maximum ground clearance is the key. The left foot braking technique should only be used for difficult obstacles. To celebrate the 50th anniversary, Land Rover invited owners to drive Black Bear Pass in Colorado. Many had never driven such extreme terrain. It was a good introduction to Series 2 and an ideal place to use hill descent control. Beyond that, the foot brake came in handy too. While Land Rover instructors were familiar with this road and guided each vehicle, when off-roading on your own and unsure of the terrain ahead, Always take the time to get out and make an inspection on foot. Look for obstacles that could damage the undercarriage. You must consider the clearance capabilities. Discovery Series 2 is purpose-built with the front and rear differentials lined up and offset. This creates the widest possible area with about 11 inches of clearance from ground to undercarriage on the driver's side. Minimum available clearance is about 8.5 inches beneath the differentials on the passenger side. Decide the path to drive. There are several options to consider for crossing each obstacle. If possible, drive around it. 
It's important to keep in mind that the sidewalls, both inside and out, are the most vulnerable parts of the tire. As they pass by, try to avoid rubbing, scuffing, and pinching. Your side mirrors will help. If you can't avoid the obstacle, drive over it. Place the obstacle under the driver's side to take advantage of the maximum clearance. If you're not sure whether the axles or differentials will clear, consider driving across. Line up the vehicle so that both front and rear wheels will go directly over the top, raising the vehicle above the obstacle. The idea is to stay high, above the obstacle. Drive slowly and remember to use the brakes to ease off gently to avoid bouncing. In a rough stretch like this, an extra set of eyes always helps. There are standard hand signals, but it's most important that you understand the spotter's instructions. It's good practice whenever driving off-road to grip the wheel firmly and keep thumbs clear of the spokes. A sudden kickback from large obstacles or ruts could cause injury. Without a spotter, visibility is key. Leave as much room on the passenger side to avoid obstacles that may be in a blind spot. Stay close to obstacles on your side where you can see them easily. Here's another consideration. Clearance of the front and rear overhangs. The common term for this is approach and departure angles. Be aware of the overhangs when approaching an obstacle. The front tire must touch the obstacle before any other part of the vehicle. Drive slowly and make sure that the rear will clear too. In addition, sometimes you must consider the clearance beneath the chassis. This is known as the breakover angle. Once again, drive over very slowly. If your vehicle is equipped with self-leveling suspension, rear clearance can be increased. Push the SLS button and the rear will rise about one and a half inches. In all situations involving clearance angles, driving slowly and smoothly will help to avoid damaging the vehicle. Once clear of rugged terrain, resume normal ride height. Overhead clearance should also be kept in mind. Approach slowly and drive through carefully. Sport utility vehicles are taller than cars, and their center of gravity is not as low. Be especially careful when crossing terrain that is on a slope. Pick the smoothest path possible. Keep the wheels straight. If the front wheels begin to slide downhill, don't try to correct and steer uphill. Steer with the slide to regain traction. Keep the pace slow and steady. Remember the area of greatest clearance is under the driver. Be aware of clearance. Approach. Departure and breakover angles. When equipped, SLS will provide increased ground clearance. Remember the height of the vehicle, and finally, cross a slope smoothly and steadily. Driving in loose terrain and slippery conditions frequently causes loss of traction. To help keep traction, smooth application of the throttle is important. If a wheel starts to spin, apply steady throttle and let it regain traction. Series 2's electronic traction control will help limit wheel slip and apply power to the wheels with the most grip. Avoid prolonged wheel spin. In all driving situations, especially in slippery conditions, smooth use of the throttle, steering and braking is important to maintain maximum control. In soft conditions such as sand, 
lowering the tire pressure can increase traction. Keep in mind that lowering air pressure will decrease ground clearance. Remember, as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. It's especially important to keep a steady pace. Once again, avoid sudden movements like heavy braking, quick acceleration, and quick turns. And be sure to air up before resuming high-speed driving on pavement. Water crossing should be approached with caution. First, get out and check the conditions. Try to park on level terrain. Always set the handbrake. Hold the vehicle with the foot brake. Press the button, pull up, and set the handbrake. Shift to neutral. Release the foot brake slowly. This assures that the vehicle is holding on the handbrake. Then shift to park. For water crossings, consider the depth, distance, and current. Check for obstacles beneath the surface. Is the bottom solid, rocky, or muddy? Make sure it is firm and clear of debris. Recommended wading depth is 20 inches, or about to the top of the wheel rim. When driving through water, use third gear, low range. Set the speed to create a bow wave, but avoid splashing to help keep the engine compartment dry. When leaving water, apply light pressure to the brakes to help dry them out. Before returning to smoother road conditions, shift from low range to high and stop. It's very important to get out and make an inspection. Check the tires for damage, both inside and out. Inspect the inside of the wheels for debris that may be caught, along with the undercarriage as well. Remember to set the self-leveling suspension to standard ride height. It will automatically lower when the speed exceeds 18 miles per hour. Your Discovery Series 2 is designed to provide many years of off-road driving when operated properly. This Land Rover is purpose-built with a highly sophisticated braking system to help provide maximum traction in varied situations. This is the world's most advanced four-wheel, four-channel, all-terrain anti-lock braking system with the additional benefits of hill descent control and four-wheel electronic traction control to increase its go-anywhere capabilities. Before getting started, read your owner's manual. Get familiar with the vehicle, the size, operation and capability. For most off-road driving, use third gear, low range. First gear for any descent, with hill descent control for added performance. Clearance is very important. From the ground, approach and departure, and breakover. Use a smooth input for the controls, throttle, steering, and braking. Remember the Land Rover rule, as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Local knowledge is all important. Inspect the terrain first. Your Land Rover is designed to go off-road, but remember off-road really means off pavement, not off a road or track. It is very important to follow the principles of the Tread Lightly program Stay on the track and travel only in areas where permitted. Thoughtless, irresponsible driving can damage the terrain and lead to closure of recreation areas. With a little experience, the operation of the vehicle should become intuitive and the techniques will help to provide successful off-road adventures. It's comforting to think you wouldn't want to be there in anything but a Land Rover. <laughs>